The National Development Minister says even with cooling measures and subsidies, there are still risks to prices in the property market. Desmond Lee is taking a cautious approach to managing demand and supply, especially amid rising costs and high demand for housing. This especially when the housing sector is still emerging from supply disruptions caused by the pandemic. Mr Lee was speaking to CNA's Rebecca Mateo, where he also explained why long-term planning is crucial. Thanks, Minister, for joining us. So how do we ensure a resilient property market in Singapore while at the same time also ensure that homes remain affordable and accessible for the many here? Hmm. So the key is recognising that in, uh, you, can, you can do your best to model housing demand. And we have sophisticated models for that. We look at births, deaths, marriages, divorces, housing preferences, uh, economic cycles, income growth, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and we keep improving the system. But nowhere, whether Singapore or elsewhere, can a sophisticated modelling system actually predict accurately what would happen when a crisis strikes. So yes, have a, a good model, understand uh, demand and supply, and try to keep it stable, as we had before COVID. And then make sure your system has got resilience to deal with uh, crisis situations where, uh, apart from supply demand disruption, you also have at work uh, market psychology, a certain psyche, and what I just described earlier, that during COVID, if not for the fact that we started building ahead of demand for shorter waiting time flats, we could not possibly have ramped up supply by 35% in 2022. All right, so that really gives us a sense that having a larger number of shorter waiting time flats to accompany your BTO supply, to accompany your, your balance flats and open selection flats, and to accompany the available resale market flats uh, adds to that resilience allows for dynamic management. Of course, in a crisis, you know, things will need to be managed, but that kind of uh, combination of uh, flat sources, new flat supply and resale flat supply with grants, enables you to, to more dynamically respond when a crisis strikes. I guess, Mr. Mai, another question will also be, you know, people don't see having a home just, you know, having a roof over one's head, but also on asset rights. So how do we balance that kind of needs among people? Well, Singapore is a homeowning society. Uh, people feel a lot of assurance in owning the home that they live in. In other parts of the world where people principally rent, they are at the mercy of the landlords. And when, when the life circumstances change and they can't pay rent, then they are under stress. As you can see, some families, a small number of families, as well as foreigners who, who rent now because of the rental market, feeling uh, stresses and strains of being in the rental market. So home ownership for Singaporeans, including Sing younger Singaporeans, continues to be a focus. But ask uh, any Singaporean, they'll tell you that they're not looking at a home purely as a home forever, nor are they looking at a home as a pure asset or commodity. As uh, people who are going through different stages in life, you're looking at a home first and foremost as a place for you to live, shelter, a place for safe harbour, a place to raise your family. But most home buyers also want to look to say, is this a good property or not? Because ultimately, I might need to move. And when I move, I need to have the resources from the sale of this property to buy my next home, to renovate it, to make it ready for my family. And that means that uh, home is both a home and an asset. And you want to make sure that uh, you address uh, both needs, which are it's really not incongruous to have both at the same time. And just a short one, Minister, do you think it's challenging to manage these both needs and to also manage people's expectations plus some like challenges in doing this? Well, first, we are a city-state, the only sovereign one in the world and a very small one, 720 square kilometres. And we've got no natural resources other than the grit and gumption of our people. And I think Singaporeans have done remarkably well in their endeavour to build up Singapore and for us to be able to provide housing for 90% of Singaporean households. They own their own homes. Uh, but recognising that we're a city-state, there are challenges 
in uh, managing supply and demand, also managing and, and, and achieving people's aspirations. And you ask a Singaporean, they want a home, they want a good home, uh, but they also want uh, the more some other things in life, like they want green spaces, they want uh, old, old familiar spots to be conserved, especially if they have precious national memories. And so they rightfully have high expectations of Singapore and we want to be able to meet those aspirations. And this conversation constantly with Singaporeans about the trade-offs that we have to manage in order to meet growing aspirations on this very small island of ours is a continuous work in progress. So we have, as DPM had said in Parliament during the budget debate, the property market is cyclical and uh, we are at the stage of that cycle uh, driven by crisis, right, where you see rising resale prices, people concerned about you know, resale prices that keep increasing. Uh, you see high demand for property, both in the private as well as the public markets. Uh, and we are taking steps uh, to restore the uh, supply-demand imbalance, for instance, by ramping up supply of housing, both HDB as well as private housing through GLS. Uh, we have put in cooling measures uh, to moderate demand. We've also put in macroprudential measures uh, to ensure that Singaporeans exercise a lot of prudence at this point in time. Um, but, and of course we put in grants and subsidies to help Singaporeans afford. But actually you look around us, uh, the environment is not uh, benign. Uh, for instance, uh, you see interest rates uh, around the world, including in Singapore, continuing to climb and may continue to increase for some time yet. Uh, you see um, economic uncertainty around the world uh, and in Singapore and around the world pe people say that we might enter into a shallow recession that's one uh, assessment but the macroeconomic the geopolitical environment is not benign and there are lots of risks there is a war in Europe there are supply chain disruptions still uh, happening and therefore even as we tackle the challenges that come with supply with supply and demand imbalance leading to this heightened uh, property market situation i think all of us uh, need to be mindful of what's happening in other parts of the world where property markets are falling uh, and falling quite rapidly so we do need to be cautious we do need to be prudent and as much as we are balancing and managing this uh, upward trajectory we also need to be fully mindful uh, of the risk to the property market.